Yeah, so uh, Annette Clark uh, from Galway and Clickern Clonburn is my latest guest on this series of Zoom calls. We're uh, all getting used to the new world of technology. Annette, how are you? Yeah, good. Look, at, I mean, it's uh, it's different times for us all. I think, you know, there's a lot of change out there. Uh, I think this is my first Zoom call, you know, so I obviously have to get a bit more used to the te technology and all that as well, you know. And welcome to the world of Zoom. It's good to have you, Annette, because um, you're someone I, I was I was hoping to catch up with. Um, we've had a number of people uh, we've interviewed in, in, in recent times who are at the front line, um, physios, nurses, um, and yourself as a member of uh, on Garda Síochána, obviously working very, very hard at the moment as well. Um, tell us a little bit about what life is like on the beat in these times, Annette. Yeah, look, um, I think in everyone's work environment, uh, things have changed for us. Um, but obviously with our line of work, um, you know, crime unfortunately still goes on. So things still have to be done. Like, you know, we've obviously um, implemented good procedures and protocols within our work environment, you know, with social distancing and all that. But then again, that's inside our control. You know, what's outside of our control is, you know, when we're out dealing with with certain people, um, you know, as I said, arrests, um, you know, crime still goes on. And there's certain incidents out there where, you know, obviously we we implement um, measures, you know, to our best capabilities to keep ourselves safe, to keep members of the public safe. But we are going to come across, you know, risky situations out there. And I suppose we just mm. always have to be mindful of that. How long are you in the force now, Annette? Um, I mean, it's 15 years now, Jack, oh. yeah. Wow. Time going by, yeah. I know, I know, and we'll, we'll touch on <clears throat> the time going by because I think it's it's almost sixteen years since uh, two thousand and four uh, and that wonderful day at Crow Park. But just getting back to the job on the job front for a second, Ed, um, where where are you stationed these days? Yeah, I'm actually stationed in Ennis at the minute. Um, okay. I switched roles in my position, so I changed changed roles. So I'm a sergeant now, based in Ennis. Um, so it's just it's it's new to me. I only started there in February, so um, I was getting used to that new position, and then obviously new measures had to be brought in relation to this. So rosters and shift work and everything changed for us. But I mean, look at we're out in the front line. We're like any other front line uh, workers out there. You know, everybody wants to wants to try to do their best. You know, to 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 do what we can, I suppose, to to flat, flatten the curve um, in relation to this. So you know, we've plenty of checkpoints and the whole lot going on there. And I mean, you know, I just want to get out there. I suppose that the majority of the members of the public have been just brilliant, and you know, we appreciate that. You know, the majority of people have been very positive about the whole thing, and you know, like anyone that I've I've met out there, um, and checkpoints and that, you know, they're very thankful to to the work that we're doing. Um, but like that, I suppose, it, the type of job we're in, we're always going to be coming across, you know, certain individuals or certain situations where it just can't be helped. And, uh, you know, we're, 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 we're on guard as you can at the end of the day. So when crime mm. is there, we're not going to ignore it. You know, it has to be, has to be, you know, we have to detect as much crime as we can and investigate things the best we can. Okay. Yeah. So, no, it's a very interesting role that you have in these times and that, because obviously um, you're out on the beat and, People are, are are urged not to go beyond two k barrets for 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 essential um essential purposes. So it's it's brought a whole new kind of um aspect to the role as well. I'm sure. It has, yeah. I mean, it's just uh, again, we just constantly reminding people, um, you know, encouraging them to to adhere to the HSC guidelines. And you know, I think you know we all know, and you know, we've listened to Dr. Tony Hulan, um you know, numerous times now, you know, nearly every evening on TV where, I mean, it's personal responsibility of everybody, you know, to, to, to keep this and to try and flatten the curve, curve as best we can. Like we're speaking to you now, um, what time are we? Uh, we're recording at 10 past 11 on a Friday morning. It's a bank holiday weekend. We're coming into Annette as well. And we, we don't know what the message is going to be in terms of restrictions or if there's any going to be lifted later on. So we, we won't go there. But um, this is going to be a busy weekend for the force in general. Are you are you working this weekend or what's your shifts like for the next few days? Yeah, so I, I'm just starting to come off day shifts. So I'm going on tonight. So I'm working tonight, 7 to 7, so 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. And then the same on. On Saturday night, Lovely. yeah. So again, I suppose like any day we go into work, we really, really don't know. Um, you could end up having a really, really busy night in there. I don't know if you've watched. Um, I think a lot of people watched the K District in, in in recent months. 
Um, I know the K district is obviously the busy, busiest district um, in the country, but like, you know, there's not a, an incident on that program that, you know, I haven't uh, experienced in, in my work time. You know, there's, you know, the, the, these things happen, you know, in everyday, everyday life. So you just have to, I suppose, I don't really know what's ahead of us. I'm just hoping that, that people, you know, adhere to whatever restrictions are there and, um, you know, are mindful and, uh, you know, just behave for the bank holiday weekend would be my message. Okay, I wish you well, Annette. I wish everybody in the force well, doing a terrific job. On, and I think people forget it sometimes on our behalf as well, so we thank you for that. Um, turning to matters football, Annette, uh, so back in 2004, you were captain at a very young age um, of the Galway team that won the Brendan Martin Cup. Can I take you back to that day and how vivid are the memories still? Um, because I know when I spoke to you a few years ago when you announced your retirement, it was the undoubted highlight of, of your career at county level. Oh yeah, look, I suppose it is something we'll always be remembered for, that group of players will always be remembered for, it's 2004, I suppose. Uh, for younger players coming through now, um, they're probably saying 2004, that's years ago, like, which probably does seem like for, for a lot of the younger, as you know, minors of that, that are coming through the, the setups and, and that at the minute. But um, from my own, my own personal experience, yeah, I mean, it's just one of the highlights that will always, you know, will always be there, um, you know, my only, you know, my only regret would be that we just didn't, uh, we didn't kick on and, and, and win more from that, you know. But look, um, you know, a very, very strong Cork team came along, and um, we just, we just didn't, we just didn't stay, stay with them in that regard. And uh, look, at, I suppose, 2004. Um, I mean, it was it, like, uh, I suppose, if we look at the girls that were in the All Ireland last year, and they came short to Dublin. You know, I suppose I kind of, kind of say at least I had my all Ireland medal, and you know I'd hope that that group of players, you know, they will get the opportunity to come back, and maybe you know rectify and maybe try and win something in the near future. You're still going strong at club level, um, and Ed, unfortunately, I was at the Gaelic grounds. And I've I've seen uh, Kilcarran Clonbarren quite a lot over the last few years. Some great matches uh, with Karen Con and getting to all Ireland semi finals and getting to a final last year, and uh, you know down at the Gaelic grounds and. More Abbey worked the ball up the pitch, good move, seconds left on the clock and they put it over the bar. It was just a heartbreaker for you. Yeah, yeah, and even when you're saying it there, it's just really just, you know, it, it's it, like even when you're reminded of it, it just, yeah, it breaks the heart every time, you know. Um, but you're getting so, so close, um, Annette, you know, so maybe yeah, my next like, question is, uh, are you going to stick with it for a little while and try and get the, get the Holy Grail? Well, I suppose we don't, none of us know when we, we'll be back on the plane uh, field again. But sure, look, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, it's not something, I know people maybe go on about retirement and that, but I suppose maybe for, even when I was retiring from the county, I just retired, I didn't really want a big announcement or anything like that. With club, I'd be kind of like, I don't know will I ever really retire from it in that, like, I don't know if that makes sense, but I'm so involved with the underage uh, yes. set up there. Um, we have a junior team there. Um, we opened up a club gym for ourselves this year, and I was involved with getting that up and running. So I'm going to have some involvement somewhere. So I don't think there'll ever be an official retirement date uh, when it comes to club for me. So um, you know, I'll always, I'll be always there as long as they want me to to help out in some regard. So um, look, um, like this year, like if I was to look back, you know, ten years ago, or whatever, you know, we were. We were struggling as a club. We came back up through the junior ranks, you know. Um, like there's three of us still involved from when we we were one of an All Ireland uh, intermediate back in 1999. Wow. So a lot of the girls we'd be playing with now obviously weren't even born at that stage. <laughs> but we we wouldn't have had a, a an underage structure at that stage, you know. So I would have went straight into into playing with that team when I was like 12, 13, 14 years of age. Um, so obviously the, what happened then is. Um, once we kind of won that and the girls had moved on, um, you know, we didn't have any underage structure, so we kind of had to rebuild again. So, I mean, the club really did go back into, you know, putting a lot of work into the underage structure. And like, I, you know, any of those girls uh, like that we're playing with now, and I know you're familiar, obviously, with the, the Ward twins, you mm. know, Olivia Dively, mm. um, Gormley, all those girls came up through the underage ranks where I remember them, play, you know, coming to the pitch, you know, as mm. six, eight-year-olds. And, you know, 
watching them play, I never thought I'd have the opportunity to play with them. So even my latter years of playing with the county, if you were to ask me the experiences of that, um, it probably, the likes of those girls coming through probably kept me playing county for those last couple of years because I never thought I'd actually get to play play county. I thought I'd be well retired by the time they'd, <laughs> they'd come through. And now we have the next batch of them coming through, which would be the, the young noon girls. Yeah, um, brilliant. You know, phenomenal girls. Again, again, girls that, you know, have come up, um, I think, I know Hannah, she, she turned 18 there, there last week. And like I was saying, because I've, I've been involved with our club minor team, and uh, I know obviously things have maybe changed in, in recent years, but Hannah, came to the, she seems like she's been minor for the last, you know, six, you know, 10 years early. You know, she came into that minor team, I'd say, when she was, you know, as in just even training with them when she was under 10s and stuff, you know. Um, so look... Look, they're great. They're a great bunch of girls. Um, I mean, uh, their their hunger is there. Um, it was hugely, hugely disappointing to lose to Morn Abbey, but from a positive side of it, you know, and I said to the girls afterwards, you cannot fault any of them because mm. some of those girls were so so young going out onto that pitch playing yeah. playing against girls and the numerous of all, all stars. And I mean, they just tried on that experience, and I know they're just you know jumping at the bit to to get back out there. So, you know. Hopefully, as I said, someday we, we can get back and we get over this uh, whole situation that we have now. And, you know, I think any of us will be just dying to, to getting back to the whole GA circle in general, whether it's, you know, cl- club level or county level or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, when you think about the, those, a couple of the young players you've mentioned there, and I've watched them contest all Ireland underage finals for, for Galway as well. And Galway have been doing really, really well at underage level in the last few years. And I mean, I think the future is, is very bright for Galway in general. Um, even talking to Sarah Keneally, who's there in Colosh de Valletlar, and the success they've had at schools level, and you know the feeder clubs in that area, and you know further afield as well. There's really good times ahead for Galway, I think. Yeah, yeah. With um, I know with the Clare Galway School, um, they've done really well in recent years with the with the school side of things. Um, even Clare Galway is a club with the failures and the whole lot. Yeah. Um, but you know, yeah. In fairness, as I said underage structures there have been in place. So you know, hopefully, as I said, you know. Hopefully, some of those girls now will start will start coming through. And that, if I take you back right to the start of your career um, and getting involved with, with with Galway, when did you make your county debut? I know you you finished up in twenty sixteen, but when was when was the first time you pulled on the jersey? Um, you're talking about you know ninety six, I'd say ninety seven. You know, wow. um, again, it was kind of. I think I was playing within the Galway ladies, as in they were a junior team at that particular time. I think I was playing with the junior team before I was actually playing underage, if that made sense. Um, it was just kind of the way um, Galway hadn't really developed maybe the underage structures within the county at that particular time. And I remember there was myself and Marie O'Connell. Um, I don't know if you know Marie. Marie would have captained us to a junior All Ireland in 2002. Okay. Um, really, really good club pair from from Killeran, from the Killeran club but um I remember we were actually talking out for the Galway Juniors and we'd been playing all year and the next thing we heard there was this minor uh, game going on against Scotland so myself and Marie were kind of like the Galway minors are actually playing for Scotland like next week we, should we not be playing that because we were still obviously underage but I think because we've been playing with the with the Galway Junior team for so long the minor management actually didn't realize that we we're still underage for minor oh, right so, um, yeah, so Laurie Joyce always tells us a good story because she was involved with that group and uh, obviously they found out last minute we were still underage for the games so myself and Marie went in. But, you know, we didn't really think anything of it, but Lauren still reminds us to this day how we just rocked in and took two jerseys, you know, from everyone else. But, um, look, it was just different times. It wasn't really promoted maybe as well as it should have been. Um, but, like, that, as I said, we just kind of, I suppose, would have been playing pretty good at, within the club and we just kind of got brought in um, we got brought into the county junior team, which would have been our, our ladies team in Galway at the time, and as I said, kind of missed out on maybe the underage the underage structure. But that was just the way it was. It was different times, but you know, thankfully now, um, you know, the structures are all there in place now, and you know, the girls are you're getting good opportunities now, even with the new under 14 structures now with blitz, blitz mm. and everything. You're getting good opportunities for every, you know, for for girls to get plenty of game time. And then can I can I finish up by kind of asking for your reflections on where you think the game is and how it's evolved over the last number of years? Because I had Jenny Green and Sue Ramsbottom on yesterday. Um, they were reminiscing on the nineteen ninety six final and replay, Monaghan and Leash, and 
I watched the game the other night just to you know for some for some homework and background on it, and I was I was massively impressed. And Jenny Green and what a player she was for Monaghan and Sue Roundsbottom, uh, it, you know right. players like that would hold their own in any era. But from from you talk about ninety six ninety seven when you started out to to being part of a crowd last year of fifty six thousand plus at Crow Park and okay the the weather might have hampered the standard of the game but we had a f- you know two really good semi finals before that Cork and Dublin and uh, Galway and Mayo where do you think the standard is um, and how far we've come in general as as, as an association and and in terms of promotion as well maybe when you were playing at a time where there was still that little struggle for recognition I think we've improved uh, but where do you think we are overall. Yeah, well, I think obviously, you know, social media now and everything have a massive, huge, huge role to play in the whole thing and just even getting the players' profiles out there. You know, it, players are known now, you know, you mentioned a, a county player within a county and, you know, at, at a national level, they're known. And I mean, I think if you're a county player, you need that little bit of identity as well. Mm. Um, and, you know, like from from a strength and conditioning, even from a skills point of view, there's so much more emphasis put into it now. You know, people are, you know, girls, like if you're involved, I suppose even, at, you know, even at a high level club, you know, with ourselves and that we even got our own, as I said, we got our own club gym up and running this year, which, Fantastic. which is huge, like, you know, like for the ladies club to actually put that work in in the background that, you know, if a girl is, is carrying injuries or whatever, they can still come down to the club pitch, get their rehab, prehab or whatever done, or even, you know, other girls get their prehab done before they get out onto the pitch. Um, so maybe like when we would have started out, you know, training that two, three times a week, you know, was probably the max that you were kind of doing and you were, you know, it was a lot of kind of, you know, maybe emphasis on maybe, you know, running in those sessions as opposed to maybe now I think, you know, you've got the small side of conditioning games, so they really put more emphasis on the skill side of things. And like, you know, then you have your you have your, your gym your gym and your strength and conditioning and stuff to do as well. So I mean, it's brilliant now that, you know, there's so much information out there and there's so many really, really good coaches out there. You know, with with team setups now, you might have a really, really good manager maybe of managing a team, but, you know, he or she will, will, will bring in the people around them to, you know, they're not just there. And I don't mean to, I suppose, it, you know, I, I, I don't mean to maybe just knock people but you know maybe back in the day you might have had a manager and you might have had maybe two selectors and they might have just been maybe writing out the team or maybe just throwing water out to the girls but they might not necessarily have had a huge impact on what was being done but now you have the backroom team, teams there I think where, where everybody has that added bit to it so you might have your, mm. your manager that's just literally managing you have your strength and conditioning coach maybe that's doing warm ups you might have your skills coach for the forwards the backs whatever so you, you, you know everybody well that's my experience of it anyway and I'm, I'm sure that's for a lot of teams out there that you know everybody has a huge role to play in the whole thing and uh, you know because no one person on their own is going to be able to, to bring the best out on, you know bring the best out in a group of players you know you just need as I said you need different people with different skill sets to, to bring on the different the you know the, the different uh, the different adaptions and that of the game mm. I have two final questions before we finish up in it uh, the first one is in relation to to football and the second one is back where we started in relation to to your role and what's what's coming up over the weekend and the weeks and maybe months ahead we don't know at, at this stage but um you obviously won that coveted all ireland senior medal with galway but you won a couple of all stars as well um so can you compare kind of team achievements with individual accolades like the all star awards i'm sure you were hugely honored to win all star awards but how do they rank alongside each other um yeah, I suppose from a personal point of view, and um, those particular years, um, was it 2004 and 2013, I think was the years. Um, the years, like, I suppose an officer, I suppose, recognises how you, you, you performed in that particular year. And yeah, like, you know, obviously a, a massive achievement in that you're saying, yeah, you know, I've played to my best ability. I, I've been re- rewarded with it. But I think from an overall point of view, I think, you know, any of the top players, um, we'll just see that as a personal award and it, you've been rewarded for maybe how well you've, you've done in that particular year but mm. like you know you'd hand, you'd hand back those to, to, to achieve in All-Ireland you know to, to you know to, to get in All-Ireland be it with your club or with, with your county you know I'd swap those awards to be honest if I was asked to give back the 2013 you know one of those for, for winning the club All-Ireland last year obviously you would like you know mm. um, so look at they're, they're a brilliant individual award to win but I think um, 
really when you're you're starting out at the beginning of the year with your team, it's all about trying to, you know, you know your your your, your steps there outlined. Whether it be say when, for example, when you're playing county, you're you're trying your best to to win every league game. You're trying to get to a league final. You know, maybe win a league final. Then you're setting up your your goals in relation to you know, getting out of a kind of championship going on into an All Ireland stages. So you're not the 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 individual awards really you don't think about them until the year is over to be honest. Um, you know, when and I suppose that's the best time to be to to be thinking about them, you know, because you're not obviously being distracted by anything else. But no, um I think great to be to, to to get that award from an individual point of view. But um, you know, it is all about the team at the end of the day. Absolutely. And um final finally a minute before I let you go and I hope you get some rest over the weekend in between the shifts as well. Um, just a message for people in general as we come into a bank holiday weekend, which is, you know, in normal circumstances, it would have been very busy, people on the move all over the country, people socialising, um, looking outside, maybe having a barbecue. I don't know if the weather is that good, but um, just a general message um, from yourself to, to people this weekend and, and before you know before I, I get you to answer that question I, I wish you all the very best and stay safe and well in it but to people in general what would your message be? Yeah I know you don't want to be sounding like a cliche all the time about stay you know say stay stay safe and, mm. and stay at home but I mean I just hope that people aren't getting complacent you know to keep listening to what we're being told as I said you know adhere to those HSE guidelines and don't get complacent because this is going to be what us and it's, you know, it's everybody's personal responsibility to behave. Um, you know, even from my own point of view, you know, I'm just not going home. You know, I, I see my husband and that's it. And he jokes and says, well, if I get this, I'm going to get it from you because I don't, I'm not traveling down home because it's just, it's just not a risk that you want to be putting on, on other members of your family. So just, again, just take on that personal responsibility and, you know, look after yourself and look after everybody else around you. And it's been great talking to you and look after yourself over the weekend and, and in the weeks ahead. And it's great to catch up. I haven't been talking to you for a while. So listen, I really Hi. appreciate your time today. Great to see you. Yeah, no bother. Listen, thanks, Jackie. All right, mind yourself. Cheers, Annette.